Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got a 2012 Toyota Prius V. It's got the 1.8 2ZR FXE engine all Priuses come with. Uh, this car is burning quite a bit of oil. It's burning coolant. It's got engine misfires and it's got uh, some cam timing codes. It's probably going to need an engine. Um, I've got one on standby just in case, but since the engine's going to be out of it, we're going to take it apart and look at it. And I've kind of done some, some rough math on it. And basically it's going to work out to be if it doesn't need any machine work, it's going to be cheaper to more or less freshen the motor up. We're going to put pistons in it, put uh, all new gasket kits on it, and that should take care of it. If it's got cylinder walls that are scored or the if the journals on the crank are messed up, again, uh, it's probably going to be cheaper just to put an engine in it. So uh, let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go back here to the trunk. We're going to disconnect the, uh, the little battery and the service disconnect for the big battery. So that's back here underneath a bunch of this stuff. Uh, all these Priuses are going to vary just a little bit as far as how to get to all this stuff. But they'll be back here. The little battery is right there. The service disconnect for the big battery is right there. Um, this will be a 10 mil. This will be, uh, you'll pull out and like this to get it off. So disconnected. And uh, so after that, the, there are some capacitors. Flux capacitor. That are in the uh, inverter. You're supposed to wait, I think, 10 minutes before you mess with anything. The reason that we're doing this is because we're going to have to pull the inverter out of it to get access to the bell housing bolts. So under the hood, there's uh, two coolant reservoirs. There's one right there for the inverter and hybrid side. There's another one there for the engine side. I like to just uh, take both of these loose. We'll put this thing on the lift and we'll get the coolant draining out while we wait for our capacitors to discharge. Underneath the car, we've got six 10 millimeters to, uh, to get this undershield off of it and several of these uh, push clip type connectors. I don't know how many, but several of them. We're going to be taking this whole shield off here. That'll give us access to our, uh, our inverter drain and our engine coolant drain. With our cover off, now we have access to both of our drains. The inverter drain is gonna be this one in the transmission. Uh, this is a 10 millimeter Allen. And of course, uh, standard pretty much is the radiator drain here. That's just a regular uh, Petcock style. We'll get those going. Some Toyotas have block drains, this one does not, so we're kind of stuck with that. Crank bolt is a 19. So if for some reason yours is just really, really on there, we've talked about it in previous videos, uh, these holes are threaded, so you can put a puller on there and uh, pull that off. Go ahead and get this little mini cross member out of the way. This is a uh, 417. So go ahead and start taking our cowl off. It's going to have to come off. Uh, these little covers here just pop on. This is the only one that's got one. These are all 14s. But I've always found you can just kind of whack on them. That one just fell. So the, this part of the cowl, it's missing uh, this thing already. But this part of the cowl, uh, there's these little push push type clips here that you can just push and disengage them and they'll come off. Keep an eye on this weather strip. It has a tendency to come off. And a lot of times this cap will also get in the way, the brake reservoir cap. Pull it off. Now we'll take our uh, wiper motor and transmission out. This will be a push type connector here. And there's also a, uh, a small clip. 
claw type here. This out of the way. This is held on with four, three or four, 10 millimeters. Four. Kind of. There's also this uh, slides onto this little bracket back there. So when you take it off, you're gonna pull it this way, slide it off. All right, so I just noticed this wiper cowl has been off before. Ordinarily, uh, where these clips are here will be onto this harness. Uh, these ones were ripped off, or so for some reason this cowl's been off here before, but it uh, doesn't matter. Now we're gonna take this, this cowl part off. This is just a whole heap of 10 millimeters. These things will fold. I see them in all different orientations. I usually just put them back however they are, but I honestly don't know if they're supposed to be up or down, but they will fold down to be able to get them out. Oh, there's another rusty tin. Now we're going to start taking the air box off of it. Uh, there's a couple of tins holding this part of the air box on. All right, so now we're going to start taking the rest of this box off. Uh, all you got to do is take this tin and uh, disconnect this math sensor. So we'll do that. Take the lower box off, three tens. Take this hose off, this is a spring clamp, another spring clamp, this will come up. We'll go ahead and start taking our inverter out, getting ready for it to come out. Um, I'm going to blow all this stuff off of it because you don't really want it going down in the inverter. We're going to clean it off. When you take these off, it's going to give you access to a whole bunch of tens for all these plugs here. Um, basically, this is all a bunch of 10 millimeters. And um, the way I know to put them back together is the clean ones are on the inside, and I just put the dirty ones back on the outside. So we'll get we'll get doing that. Now, uh, there is this this little switch right here. Just FYI. I don't remember what it stands for, but it's called the ILK circuit. But uh, this thing will basically prevent you from starting it if it sees that this little switch isn't open. So just FYI. I don't want anybody out there getting shocked, getting killed. Um, do a little bit of due diligence and just kind of randomly put, kind of just check sort of everything. Make sure that you don't have any any voltage anywhere on anything shouldn't have anything but you know, better safe than sorry Just make a mental note of where these go. I don't think that they'll go the opposite direction, but uh, just in case. Now over here, this one is, uh, it's a connector that's got a little push lock right there. You'll push on it and you'll pick this whole thing out and uh, we'll be ready to get this thing out of here. So the inverter has coolant going through it. Uh, there's two kind of quick connect type uh, fittings on them. They have a sort of a, a female groove in there that you can get a little flat head behind them and pull out. To be able to get them off. There's one right there, and there's one over here on this side. You get a pretty good look at it over here. 
right uh, right there is the opening the one that's the hardest to get to uh, is the DC DC inverter or converter uh, that's back here it's got a couple little clips on it it's pretty finicky to get to get to to get it open So this will be 110 and we'll take it off. With all of our uh, wiring and coolant hoses done, we're going to take this inverter out. Memory serves, it's only three bolts. So you can kind of push down this clip to get access to this one. 110, 110, and 110, uh, four. 110 so there's basically one on all all sides of it It'd be that 10 right there that one that one right there and that one now we'll go ahead and start taking uh, some of our vacuum lines fuel lines coolant lines off that are just kind of easy to get to most of them are spring clamps the fuel line is a little bit different uh, I'll I'll walk you through how to take it off because it's it's hard to see it's backwards. But so in the car, this is a hard metal line that kind of goes like this. You're gonna kind of open this door right here, and that'll allow you to pull it out. And then this thing will slide onto the lines like that. The fuel line itself is pretty easy. It's just two push pins on either side push it down <laughs> we'll go ahead and start taking our uh, upper radiator hose off this thing's got a, a metal piece that's got two brackets on it that are held on with 12s. Now what we'll do is we'll take, uh, looks like this water pump's probably gonna come off because you don't have much room there. Uh, it's electric water pump, so we'll disconnect it. The compressor, I leave the high, uh, the high voltage side hooked up to it, but there's also a, uh, a smaller uh, low voltage side of it. We'll get it disconnected. I'm at water pump, is on with uh, 512s. Compressor's on with uh, three, looks like, 12s. We'll go ahead and get this one from the top here and then go down below and get uh, get the rest of the water pump bolts off. Now we'll go ahead and start getting our our harness off. Take uh, what's off, what we can get to down here. There'll be an O2 sensor here. Getting ready to take the engine mount bracket off of it, or the engine mount, I guess. Uh, there's 114 underneath it, 114 nut. We'll take it off, we'll lower it down, we'll take the, the rest of the mount off, and uh, we'll also take the uh, that black bracket off, and that should give us all the room that we're gonna get from this point.
We're gonna go ahead and take our 317s out here. Um, what we're gonna do before we take this off, the engine's gonna fall. So the plan is uh, we're gonna hook, go ahead and before we take these off, we're gonna hook our chain onto the engine to support it. We'll have our, uh, our cherry picker down here holding it. We'll take those remaining ones off. Then we, I think we have two bell housing bolts left and then we're, we're home free. So that's the plan for right now. So we've got our engine supported right now. Uh, there's a, a threaded hole right here with nothing in it. Uh, it's an 8 by 1.25 thread bolt that's going to hold it in. Uh, we just had one laying around. You can probably take a bolt out of something that we've already taken apart. The other side, uh, we just took off the bolt that's holding part of the EGR cooler on and uh, ran our chain through there. So now we're ready to get the, uh, the engine mount off. So that'll be two 17s up top and we'll be able to fish that out and then we'll take that bracket off. In order to get this last one off, this stud has to come out. This has got an 8 mil head on it. Now we'll take this engine mount bracket off. Uh, it's three 14 mils. All right, so we got our two 12s uh, remaining bell housing bolts off. We're going to try to, it's kind of hard to film all this and, and walk you through it at the same time. It's going to take two people. We kind of had to separate the engine from the trans, but now we're going to go ahead and try to get this motor out. In theory, the transmission shouldn't move because it still has uh, the mounts on either side. So the transmission should stay where it is, so we're not supporting it. Well, that's going to wrap up part one, guys. Uh, stay tuned next week. We're going to take this thing apart, see what we're working with. Uh, part three will be us putting it back in. So, hope to see you then.